Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Games from Scratch, and today we're going to be looking at another free and open source tool that's under development, and this one is called TerraForge 3D. Now there was just a new release, that new release added Linux support among other things, it also switched the renderer to a PBR based workflow, and I think that's actually added a decent number of bugs. So we might have some crashes during this. It's just one of those things you got to expect. It's a single developer effort. Uh, it's a very cool project, but there are definitely some warts here. So we're at the webpage now. Uh, it is Terraforce 3D as an open source procedural train generation toolkit, as well as procedural modeling toolkit. Now I did a community post a few weeks back where I asked if it's modeling with one L or two to you. Well, apparently some people it's modeling with three Ls. Uh, it is suitable for modern 3D environment design. It can be used for both low poly games as well as for cinematic shots in film. This is probably overselling things a little bit, but that is a, a trend here. It, it, advice to the developer, um, finish development a little bit more before you make some of these grandiose claims. You're going to see exactly what I mean when we get to the GitHub page. Uh, in terms of the features of Terraforce 3D, it is both GPU and CPU power. Uh, I don't really know why you would pick GPU for the most part. CPU seems to be more feature complete, uh, but GPU does work faster on larger um, geometry. Uh, we've got an advanced node editor. You can use basically math to generate your train. Uh, we'll look at this in action. We've also got some filters for doing things like simulating erosion over time. Uh, this is one of those areas where I have experienced some crashes, so hopefully it won't crash this time. Uh, you can also add some uh, custom shapes such as hills, craters, and so on to your generated geometry. You can show a uh, a custom sky, you can simulate sea level, and you can export in a variety of formats. Though, to be honest, OBJ is the only one that I have found works reliably. But if you're exporting out a static mesh, it works in that regard. Also, you can bake out a height map image. Uh, there's texture baking built into this application as well. All right, so let's jump in, and then we'll come back and take a look at the details of it itself, some of the grand promises that they're making. And also, as I mentioned, there is a brand new release. Uh, it added a new shader note editor, a new texture, Baker, Linux support, and a PBR based render. Some pretty big stuff there and a code refactoring. Uh, but I think that combination of things is also why we're seeing some instability in this particular release. All right, so here we go. This is Terraforce 3D in action. You start with a base mesh. You can change the resolution of what you're working with, but more or less what you want to do is start with some kind of a generator. So again, you can work on CPU or GPU based, and we can come in here. We're adding in a layer of noise, and we can edit it. Uh, we can edit it globally up here, but there is our noise layer that was added in. So you can say, okay, enable this layer. We have this one be a uh, Perlin noise. Uh, we can set a different seed for it. We can change the frequency of the noise like so. And that's a little intense. So let's dial the strength back a little bit. All right, so there is the base of our terrain. Now you can go ahead and add multiple new layers and kind of layer things together, but we'll use this as a starting point for our train. Now I mentioned earlier on, there are tools in place. So I'm gonna start with something that crashes early and often, and that is the filter. So if we wanna do and kind of simulate erosion over time, I can turn auto updating off, come up here to windows and go to filters manager. Now I wanna showcase one thing that is kind of annoying. Uh, here, let me just come back here so you can see my start bar. Uh, with this application, all new windows are actually apps. There, there's some advantages to that. You can tile them, you can move them across uh, different desktops. You've also got the ability to bring in and dock things however you wish. So there's a lot of configurability there, but when a window is undocked, uh, undocked, it's actually its own thing. So a lot of times you'll go ahead, so I'll come here and I'll say, okay, I wanna get the filter manager like so, so now it's checked. It, it'll often be kind of hidden in behind when you look for it again. Just one of those little things. Again, anyways, come here, we're gonna do erosion over time. So you see here, this is basically doing a particle simulation. You can pick the number of particles, the, the amount of erosion to happen, the amount of gravity and so on and so forth. This is gonna apply a simulation of a bunch of rain over a bunch of time and the effect on our train. And hopefully we don't crash when I click the apply button. So let's go ahead. So this is, there you go. So we're simulated erosion on our train. So you can see how you can use this to make kind of more realistic looking train. Uh, that is applied. Now, if I turn auto update on, it does get rid of it, which I don't know what's going on in that regard. Also, I find that post-processing is literally broken. I don't know why that one is either. Again, though, this is definitely a work in progress and there are some um, little things that you're gonna run into here and there. So that is our simplex noise. I'm gonna turn that noise off so we're back to just a straight plane because I wanna showcase there's also this node editor option. So you can generate your... Um, your train um, displacements using this guy. So I'm gonna go ahead, edit, and let's grab this and actually dock it to the side of this window, bring it over so we can see things. So here is the result, here it is. We've got auto update turned on again. And now what we can do 
we scroll around here somewhere, there it is. We have an output node right there. So with the output node, what we can now do is start generating our train accordingly by adding a number of different uh, nodes over time. So you see here, uh, you've got uh, mesh coordinates, you've got over time, you've got different seeds, you can uh, add a hill in, uh, you can uh, blend things together, like the blend tool right here, you can bring in random numbers to handle things. So I'm gonna, again, we're gonna recreate the exact same thing we did earlier by applying just a Perlin noise to our object right there. And then you got a number of different controls on it. So we can change out the seed, the octave, the frequency, like so. So a lot of times it's gonna be frequency and strength you're working. You also have different fractal types. So if you wanna have, again, uh, this is FBM, very much different results. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add another node in here uh, and we're going to do a curve editor. So here and over there, All right, drag it over here. And we can apply that curve editor to say the frequency. And now we've got the ability to control the frequency. So you see the effect of it over the course of our life. Now, I don't actually know how to move an existing point. So I wanna move that point. I don't, I don't know how to do this. Oh, there we go. All right, it's very finicky precise. All right, so there we go. Let's try and move this guy right here. So we've gotta be very precise so that we're not moving the all right you all right let's go up here and we'll bring this noise up here so there you see the end result so you can do the entire thing and control it all using these node graphs instead and that's how you go ahead and create your ultimate terrain here now one of the things that they've really changed with this particular release is we do have the um we've switched to a shader based set before it used to be you did um material one, material two, material three, set up different heights for those to kick in. Now what you do is create a shader graph. I'm gonna go ahead, we'll get rid of this guy right here. Uh, and I'm gonna undock this guy and we'll pin it over here. So this is another, this is a new tool. Again, could be a little bit crashy. This is the output. Right now you can have it just basically spit out a single color. Not the most exciting thing you've ever seen. What we could do instead is start bringing in, so we could create a PBR based material. Now, one of the things I find very confusing is there are literally two PBR materials. <laughs> I don't know why, they're slightly different, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and take this material right here. And now, uh, and this is one of those things I'd really love to see a, a usability feature in the future is we can bring in each individual textured one at a time. You can load in whatever texture you want using, uh, so if I wanted to bring in my snow, I could pick the, the object right here. But another neat feature that Terraforge has built in is the texture store. And this is a link to, uh, I forget what site it is pulling these down from, uh, but you can download individual things in various different uh, resolutions. I have one downloaded right here, actually two downloaded. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead with that aerial rock. Now what you're gonna find is when it is downloaded, Oh, so now I need to find it. All right, so there it is. So here is my aerial rock. What I can do is I can actually drag over the individual things and connect them into a channel like so. Oh, please don't crash. Damn it. All right, so we crashed. I'll be back in a second. All right, so here we are. Different looking mesh at this point in time. Uh, and you know what? The, the lighting is a little weird on that. So let's go ahead and set up the sky box on it. So I undid my crash. Sky settings here. I, I can't get any of this to work, by the way, the cloud generation. It does have procedural sky generation. It doesn't work for me, so I'm going to use a skybox instead. Uh, we set it up there. It should be showing. So now I just got them down here and say, all right, show me the skybox. There we go. Um, so here is our world. we got some weird lighting going on, but we'll live with it. Okay, so there is our single material applied. Uh, what we can now do is come in and uh, set up all the other channels again. Uh, it is a bit of a pain. You literally have to come in, create the texture, drop it in. So I'd love to be able to use that store, uh, the texture store, this guy right here, and do a literal drag and drop of the entire object into here. Uh, hopefully that comes in the future. But otherwise, again, you're setting up your material. So here is uh, ambient occlusion. And we'll drop that into the ambient occlusion map. So this version just got um, this PBR-based rendering uh, added to it. Uh, let's do one more. We'll just do the normal map as well. Let's drag that over, click that guy there, set up the normal, drop the normal into the normal output, like so. Boom. All right, so there we have our object with various different things set up. Now what we can actually do at this point in time uh, is we could add in another node here and we can do erosion to it or what you're probably gonna do is distri distribution between multiple 
different uh, levels. So let's say you had uh, grass and then snow and so on that you wanted to blend between. Uh, you would bring your one um, PBR material here and drop it into here. You would bring your other one, drop it into there. And then you do various different heights uh, where they would blend in and blend out. And then you could have multiple different levels of height there. By the way, your shader here, you also have the ability to export it out and save it as a file. And you can print out to GLSL. So for example, if I want to do here, do that. And then just go down here, the terminal, there is the GLSL that is being generated from this visual graph. So this new visual programming, oops, uh, all right, that wasn't a crash. That was me just exiting by accident. Uh, this new visual programming was just added. So all this new shader stuff, the PBR workflow, that is new to this particular release. Another thing I haven't really showcased here is you also have the ability. Uh, so in addition to, let's do a quick setup here. So let's go back in and we'll edit. We'll do a just a simplex noise. Like so, oh, no, not a simplex noise. We'll do a Perlin noise again. Drag it over and out and jack the frequency up. All right, there we go. So there we have a very simple object. Uh, this doesn't necessarily have to be on a um, uh, plane. Uh, you can also come down here, change the base mesh. We could have it work on a sphere like so, and we can also apply it uh, to um, say a donut, like so. Uh, so you do have control over that. Also, by the way, we can do mix and match of these things. So I could also be just using it this way. So I could do a noise layer here. Uh, we'll enable that guy. Uh, we can change out. So there's various different types of it. So we could do, per, instead of Perlin, we'll do Simplex 2, and we can pick fractal type of it. Uh, you got control over all the various different things that are generated and so on. So you can mix and match multiple different generators together. You also have the ability when you use a CPU noise, um, noise layer, uh, we can also add a mask onto it. So if we want to go ahead, we can do additive, multiplicative, and so on. So this is if you want to do something like add a hill or a crater to an object. It doesn't make a lot of sense in donut world, uh, but you can actually control it via these masks and you can change the radius of it. Uh, the height of the, the resulting thing. So if you wanted to, you know, create a, a hill shape inside of your train, uh, you can do it this way. You can, you can change the placement of it uh, using this guy right here. Again, not making a ton of sense on this weird donut shape we've created, uh, but you get an idea of what's going on. Now, finally, there are a few other options here. The cool thing here is you can actually export your mesh out. There are a variety of different formats. Again, I find by far uh, the wavefront object format works the best. Also, if you're just using this to create train for like, um, say, another game engine, you're just creating a height map. Uh, come on down here to dashboard. Uh, you do have the option out here. You can switch into texture baking mode. And I'm not 100% certain what just happened there. Uh, again, it changed out a little bit from what it's going, but basically you can use this mode. I'm not, again, 100% certain what is going on here, uh, but you can use this to generate and bake out the height maps, but I'm not sure what's going on, why that is doing that. Uh, this is a big change to this particular release, so uh, I don't know what just happened. Uh, but you can also generate height maps using the baking. Uh, yeah, that's about it. There are a number of features hidden across here. Another neat thing, uh, good that I like to see in general, uh, is there is the, um, the theme editor here, so you can change out the color themes. There are multiple themes available. Uh, they are available right here, so if you want, switch out to the Maya version, dark, which actually is probably my favorite, if I'm honest. Or this one, which kind of reminds me of back in the like, Irix days of how um, the things used to look. Uh, but yeah, so that is, I'm going to turn texture bake mode back off. I'm not sure what 100% was going on there. Uh, that is a quick look at TerraForge. Again, uh, the, GP, the, um, the UI could definitely use a little bit of love. Uh, the move to uh, a brand new renderer and brand new platform and with the refactor behind the scenes, I think has introduced a few uh, crashes and instabilities there. And there's definitely some room for uh, documentation and, and explanation of what's going on. Uh, but it's, it's a neat project uh, with some neat capabilities and one that I would just yeah, definitely recommend checking out. It's definitely interesting uh, and it is uh, free and open source. Now I did mention earlier on, they do make some grandiose claims on their uh, GitHub page. 
And I, I would honestly, if you're the developer here, I would dial some of this back. So you can see exactly what I'm talking about right here. So you saw Terraforce, Terraforce 3D in action. By the way, it is a C++ based project. If you wanted to uh, check out the code, you can do so. Now here's where they, they make some really grand claims here. So Terraforce 3D is one of the world's best procedural train generation and modeling tools. Uh, this is being maintained actively, has got everything you need to bring your imagination to life. Now calling yourself one of the world's best, well in development is a bold claim, especially because there's quite a few train generation tools out there and when you throw and modeling tools into the mix that means you're saying okay blender max maya psh, nothing on us um it's 100 free and open source good no problems there it is the world's best free train generator okay that that's a that's a bold statement and i probably wouldn't make that one as well uh there are a number of uh, tutorials on youtube there is some documentation but it definitely needs more in terms of usability a lot of it's more on the programming and sdk side of things uh but it is an interesting project you can see some of what you can do with it uh, in action here the cool thing here uh is with the fact that you can use a variety of different shapes uh you could use this for doing things like generating planets instead so if you were working here uh you could definitely all right, now what's going on? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Anyways, you, you could... Oh, auto-update's off. Maybe that's part of it. Okay. Uh, you can use this guy to create uh, planets, uh, different effects really simply, uh, and apply them across the board. It's... Um, yeah. Anyways, that is it. That is Terraforge 3D. Uh, other than a couple of very bold claims, it's an interesting project from a single developer. I love to, to you know, show a spotlight on these type of projects. Uh, they're the kind of people that kind of tend to appreciate the influx of traffic and, and the, uh, the new eyes, people playing around with it, giving new feedback, hopefully give them a bit of a bump. Uh, let me know what you think of Terraforge 3D. Let me know what you think of their claims in general. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.